What do you tell investors, though, who were enjoying that run up when the, the, when the FANG stocks were just soaring and now just want to lock in whatever they can because it's, it's, it's slicing away fast and furious? Well, mind you first, people need to get in their bones the notion that stocks are volatile in any time period, whether up or down. This is a period where I think it's hard for people to understand what's going on because we're having something going on that we don't normally have, which is normally in either a correction or the early time phases of a bear market, there's one or two big scary stories. This time I can count seven scary stories happening all at once, trying to get your head around all these and deciding is it a whole lot of bees stinging us that we got to run away from, or is this something that's more potentially fatal? It's, it's just hard for people to get their hands around it. It's what I call the pessimism of disbelief, because whatever it is you say, they've got yes buts for. Well, that was legendary investor Ken Fisher with Neil Cavuto trying to calm everyday investors who are seeing stocks way down from their all-time highs. So what can we do to figure things out for the rest of the year? Let's ask our market gurus, Melissa Armo and Lee Munson. Melissa, let me start with you. Uh, you know, it was interesting to hear uh, Ken Fisher talk about seven scary things at one time. Uh, it does look like the, you know, this is a unique period. We, we're off the first 100 days, of the fourth worst in history, in history. So that puts it sort of in context. But where do we go from here? I think the rest of the year is going to be tricky, Charles. I think people are so used to the market being bullish. They're so used to the market running up. I think there's a high probability that the market may not make a brand new all-time high for the rest of 2022. And if it does, it's going to be very late in the year. The last time that we didn't make a new high on any calendar year, I can't even tell you. Remember from 2016 to 2020 before COVID hit, the market was really bullish under Trump. And there's, there's this saying, it's a rising ship lifts all tides. When the economy is great, everyone benefits. Low income, medium income, high income earners. And right now we're having a problem with the economy. I don't know what all those seven things are. Off the top of my head, inflation, recession, the possibility of war with Russia, high oil prices. I mean, there is a lot of things right now. And nobody can really know or predict where we're going to go from here. But right. I definitely think the volatility is going to continue. And people need to be prepared for that. You know, Lee, uh, those other three times it was worse than this. The last one was 1970. The good news is the rest of the year was up an average of 31, 32 percent. Of course, different circumstances then as, as to now. But, but how, are you, how are you handicapping maybe the rest of the year? Okay, well, okay. So I'm happy. I'm here at a great Memorial Day barbecue. I'm with some friends down in Las Cruces. It's one I put my suit on just for you today. Thank you. I uh, even have a little of a <laughs> vegan uh, uh, hamburger for you if you come by. So here's the deal. I've been getting cornered, right? And people want to be like, what do we do? And I've told them, listen, you've got two things you need for a summer rally. By the way, I think the summer rally, like the other guests, I think it's going to be more like a Halloween rally. But that's not the big point. The big point is, number one, First, you have to have all news is bad news. That's like Target going down a quarter. That's like the retail stocks last week, like Macy's and Dick's, Dick's Sporting Goods getting crushed. And so you have to go from that to any news is good news. Look what happened last Thursday when Amazon had their big annual meeting and the stock was up 5%. That's just this little example of not great news, the stock still rallied. Then we have to have the second thing. And this is the hard part. We have to have the Federal Reserve, I know people are sick of hearing about the Fed, we have to have them suggest that maybe, maybe there needs to be a pause. Maybe they've done just enough. Right. And last Tuesday, when the market was going up, they started saying, we might pause in September. And so I think we have a wonderful summer rally that's gonna happen, but again, just because I think a summer rally is going to happen, don't be surprised if it doesn't happen in Halloween. But now is the time to stay put, you add to your positions, I just don't exactly like to buy things that don't make money. You know me. I like sure, dividends. I like sure. value. That's what's do, been doing well. You know, Melissa, to that point, uh, the speculation over the Fed has driven this market. Bostic, uh, the Atlanta Fed chief, was the one who said maybe we'd pause in September. The market liked what they heard. Uh, just how critical is it that, on one hand, they don't do under, you know, do too little and inflation keeps going up, but they don't do too much and, and crack uh, this economy wide open? The problem is, Charles, that the Fed has been wrong for the last two years. 
they have a difficult job to begin with. But when you're in an environment where things are costing more, raising interest rates is a terrible idea for consumers because we're trying to prevent a recession. People are going to spend less if they can't afford to buy more because rates are going up, like houses and cars and things like that credit card bills. So I don't think raising rates is a good idea. And their insistence on doing it, I think, is a bad idea. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to prevent a recession. I think inflation, the problem with inflation is we still have supply chain issues. And the biggest problem we have right now is the administration has policies in place. And those policies have cost, have, have prevented oil prices from coming down. They're going up. So everything you buy, eggs, chicken, everything you buy, if you order a washing machine, how does it get to you? How does it get to the store? Diesel, it gets there by sure, a truck sure. It's because the cost of oil is up. So we have inflation because of high oil prices. If the Fed raises rates, that's not going to pull those prices down. Do right. you understand? So yeah. until 2025, I hate to say it, until a new administration, we may be in for two and a half more years of high prices, no matter what the Fed does. Well, we're definitely going to be, uh, they're not coming straight down. I think, Lee, uh, a lot of folks looking for the next CPI report just to maybe at least see if they peaked. If there's a sense that they peaked and they won't go any higher, will that give the market some relief? This whole market is about inflation. When I'm talking to my more, you know, people who are a little bit more technical, a little bit more savvy, I say, listen, this is all about peak inflation. Now you got some smart people at Goldman I respect. They say it peaked in March. I don't know about that. You got the IMF thinks we're peaking right now. There's some people I love over at JP Morgan, smarter than me, think we're going to peak this summer. The point is, the smartest people on the street do not see inflation peaking next year. They think it's happening right now. And you know why everybody is so bonkers and has this fever about what's happening this year? Is because yeah. it's always darkest before the light. I uh, think we're peaking somewhere between three months ago or three months from now. And okay. that's what the market needs to feel. And then we go up. We, we gotta go leave up it, hard. We got to leave it there. Thanks for the vegan burger. Uh, wrap one up and save it for me. See you, see you all later. You got it. All right. Now, so much for that summer getaway. Why more of us 